In this analysis video, we're going to take a look at the swing of Matt Kuchar. Now, Matt Kuchar is uh, one of the prime examples used at, for the one plane swing technique. Um, he works with uh, Chris O'Connell. Um, I'm going to take a look at uh, his driver swing and show you a few things he does in transition. And uh, one thing you can learn from uh, his release and impact that you can apply to your own game to help you with your ball striking consistency. Um, so on the left we have Matt Kuchar hitting a uh, draw with a three wood. Um, great filming work here uh, by Terry Rolls and his team. Um, so first thing we're going to look at is uh, transition. Um, so you can see he's got kind of some of his uh, his normal um, hand, keep the club head well outside the hands, uh, work that elbow back as if you were starting a lawn mower. Um, but uh, as we get to the top of the swing. Um, we're going to pay attention to what's happening with the trail shoulder. Um, so now that I've been here in Houston for a little while, I've worked with more and more uh, golfers who've tried the, the one plane method. Um, so nothing, um, this won't be, you know, a bash one way or the other. Um, really what I want to do is, is highlight what he does in his trail shoulder um, that allows him to play from such a flat position at the top of the swing. Um, and for comparison, we're going to look at this um, iron swing over here on the right, um, where it uh, it appears that he's playing less of a draw, uh, more a straight shot, or even a fade. So you'll have a lot of the similar characteristics um, to what we're going to see over here on the driver. Uh, but I want to highlight um, a couple little changes that we'll see that vary from whether he's hitting a draw uh, three wood or a straight slash fade iron. Um, okay, so. As we, as we look at this transition at the top of the swing, um, the, the right elbow has worked a little bit more across his body. That's, that's kind of, a, or away from his body, I should say. It's kind of working more along the side of his body instead of staying well out in front of his chest, right? Because his chest is kind of pointing out in this space here. Um, that's kind of characteristic for uh, Matt Kuchar's swing. Now, as he starts down, you'll be able to see that that right arm uh, tends to start working into uh, external rotation. Or if I was to um, zoom in here, basically what we'll see is as he starts down, you can see that the elbow leads the hand slightly and you can see that the club starts working a little bit more shallow. Even when he's working on this slightly steeper pattern when he's trying to hit more of a straight shot or a little bit of a fade. Um, you'll see that where the elbow is there, it's kind of out away from his, uh, you know, away from his side, kind of more towards the side of his body, um, or out away from the front of his chest, more towards the side of his body. And then as he starts down, that elbow is working in the direction of his belly button or sternum, it's kind of working back in front of his body as it goes into a little bit of external rotation. I'll bring up an amateur real quick uh, just to show you the comparison of the danger of that arm getting too much uh, behind your body. Zoomed in, here's a golfer who um, had that right arm working a little bit more into that flying elbow position, a little bit more along the side of his body. Now the danger from here is as you elevate with the arm behind your body, um, you'll quickly run out of external shoulder range of motion. So part of the, the benefit of what Matt Kuchar does, or part of the reason why Matt Kuchar is able to make a good transition shoulder move with that external rotation is that he keeps his elbow close to, if not um, connected to his rib cage. If he were to raise it up there, um, you'd be, he'd be very uh, restricted in terms of going into more external rotation. So here we'll see the normal tendency when that shoulder runs out of external rotation, it's frequently going to result to going into internal rotation as this gentleman is demonstrating there. And that internal rotation can create a massive steepening of the shaft, as you'll see by the very vertical position over on the right, compared to the external rotation of the shoulder, um, creating a much more uh, flat shaft angle, um, which will allow for him to make his good body pivot and have really good sequencing as he gets into the downswing. So key number one for you is to make sure that your uh, trail shoulder goes into external rotation as you start the downswing. Uh, for key number two, we're going to take a look at what Matt Kuchar looks like at impact. So over on the left, as we take him down, we can get towards impact. Um, we can see we'll 
just to be fair, we'll go one frame past so that it, it doesn't skew it that much. Um, so frequently, uh, golf instructors will talk about kind of keeping your shoulders parallel at impact while getting your lower body open. Uh, and typically, we'll use the uh, down the line camera angle, or the golf instructors will say that we'll use the down the right down the line camera angle in order to um, demonstrate that relationship. Because from down the line, you do want to see this right uh, arm a little bit underneath the left. Um, that's indicating that it you had good uh, shallowing arm movements during transition and good arm timing. Uh, the release was a little bit more of what I call uh, wipe and then kind of extend as opposed to going into internal rotation and really just uh, kind of turning that club over through impact. So this is really good forearm slash shoulder alignments here at impact. Um, now, cautioning you again, some danger can happen if you try to keep your shoulders closed. Um, so what'll what'll sometimes happen is trying to keep your shoulders closed will limit the ability or the rotation amount in the rib cage. So this uh, three quarter face on view um, is one of my favorites for showing where the chest is pointing as we reach impact. It's also a good way to look at the sequencing. Um, so during his downswing, you can see his lower body is starting but you can see that as soon as his lower body starts his rib cage is actually doing a good job of transmitting that force right through there and then it gets into the shoulder girdle pretty quickly so you'll see there's a little bit of relaxation in this lead shoulder as the as the hips and the rib cage kind of work together rotating a, uh, towards the target you'll see that his shoulder blade which is kind of in line right there basically works a little bit um, towards the uh, into protraction so it basically works a little bit away from the target that way um, kind of stretching some of the muscles in the posterior shoulder so then as he starts down we're seeing that upper body that lower body continue to rotate kind of lagging behind with the arms and then here we have him pretty much at impact so now from this down the line view it does look like his shoulders are close to square, right? We can kind of see there are his shoulders. From his face on view, you can see that his chest or his pelvis is pointed well out in front of the target, um, somewhere in that 40, 45 degree range. We can see that his upper body is pointing well out in front of the target, um, kind of down along that target line, uh, somewhere in that 30 degree range. and as a result, the arms kind of look like they're more behind or toward the right half of his body. Um, you can also, we can imagine how it would look from down the line. Um, we can see this right forearm is kind of underneath the left. So we know that this left arm is closer to us than the right. Keeping that perspective, you can see how that right side is kind of underneath the left, but it it's more this side bend that creates that look of the shoulders staying closed, not actually lack of rotation. I find that a lot of golfers who try to restrict their uh, rotation of their core um, ends up with uh, significant issues when hitting the longer clubs and can frequently uh, have early release of the arms, hit it fat, um, have lots of contact misses. So two great keys you can learn from looking at Matt Kuchers or how the trail arm works in uh, into external rotation as he goes into his downswing and how he sequences his body from or his transition from the ground up um, enabling him to reach this really classic looking impact position regardless of of the little nuances that he has in his takeaway and or backswing so if you're struggling to understand how to shallow your arms or what a good impact position should really look look at um, Feel free to check out our other videos here on the YouTube channel or uh, go over to Golf Smart Academy and get a free membership where you can learn about some of the uh, science-based instruction and um, what 3D research as well as uh, current golf science trends can help you understand about how to simplify your goals when you're practicing your golf game.